Hey, my name is Matt Storr and I work for Saxophones for a Living and today I'd like to show you my lathe setup. Now, folks have asked me about what lathe I recommend um, quite often. Now, first I'll say if you've got the room for a big lathe uh, and you can find something used in your area, it seems to be pretty location specific, at least here in the US, um, you can do some research and if you're the kind of person that is comfortable buying used tools and maybe doing a little bit of work on them, um, then you're not going to regret getting a bigger lathe as long as you don't move house too many times. But my, you know, workshop is an Airstream trailer, so I am constrained with the lathe I can have. Now recently I moved to a house that has a bigger garage, so actually I have a South Bend 9 inch that I'm hoping to, you know, overhaul, not restore, that someone gave to me. But for the longest time, I've been using this little guy, the TAIG Micro Lathe, um, T-A-I-G. And I tried a couple other things. I'm aware of the other Micro Lathe out there, but this one is the one I ended up going with after trying a lot of different stuff because it's just so sturdy. It is not quite a looker for most people. Um, it's fairly utilitarian and very basic, but it is just built rock solid. And you can actually do an awful lot with this little guy if you're doing woodman repair. Um, I've got it set up with a collet chuck, which I really like, and this takes um, ER16 collets. I think there might actually be a 5C like head now. There didn't used to be. Um, you can see the you know tailstock is extremely basic. Some people modify these, uh, you know, to have like a um, to be actuated by like a, a little you know a tailstock wheel, um, but I haven't really actually really found that to be necessary. Um, and you can see it just got all these like uh, Allen key adjustments. So if you want to like move this, you can. Um, so you can get actually offset if you get like a lathe dog. You can do like a tapered thing. There's a power feed, but it is not like a one to one thing. It's actually driven by a rubber band. And uh, when it's engaged, this is kind of hard to see. That little lead screw there is not actually firmly attached. It's attached by a bit of a spring, so it's got like a bit of give to it. It's fairly handy for like, you know, making a nice long smooth cut, but it's not something you can thread with. So you can't thread with this machine, so you'll be doing like tap and die stuff. And they have a die holder for this that works okay, but the power feed, yeah, I don't know. I, you know, when I've used it, I've liked it, but the, you know, I broke a rubber band a while ago and like I literally haven't gone into the house to get another one. Um, so, it's not something that was like, you know, super uh, useful to me, but it might be to other folks. But it is not a like direct drive and it is not like geared. So you can't do threads on this with a lathe bit. You can use it to like hold stuff and use the die holder and the stock and do some pretty good looking threads. But that is a shortcoming of this particular model. Now there are attachments for it. Let's see. There's a, so here is the like die holder. This actually goes in the stock um, and it's like, again, like sort of utilitarian, a little weird until you use it. This is the milling attachment, which I've actually used a few times. It goes on here and basically, you know, sorry, it goes, goes on the cross slide and it works pretty well. It's again, it looks a little weird, pretty utilitarian, but it works really well when you get into it especially considering what it costs um, compared to a lot of other stuff. This is the compound slide, which I've used. Um, you actually attach the tool directly to the table. <laughs> Again, a little weird, but it works really, really well. Um, and there's like how it attaches onto the cross slide. You can see, so that attaches here onto this cross slide and you can adjust the angle and then cinch it down and then use it as a compound slide. Um, there's a steady rest for it, which I have actually used. I made a saxophone tenor tenon from solid bar stock one time because I didn't have anything else to own. Um, not something I'll recommend, but I mean, it worked, right? I ended up making like something that no one would have known, like was made on this tiny, tiny, tiny little lathe. Um, and it's just super rigid. Let's see if you can see. It's like an aluminum extrusion that's full of concrete um, for the bed. And, it's, and then it's got a steel top and it's just so durable. Um, I've mounted mine on like a piece of pine and I made this 
lathe bench that goes in my workshop. These legs are actually like filled with sand up to about here. Um, and that helps dampen vibrations. And I've got a, you know, a magnifying lamp that, you know, when I'm doing small parts, it's pretty handy. Um, and it's not very loud. It comes with this big old motor. Some people put like direct uh, or DC motors on them. Let's see. But I haven't really had any issues with this one, so I haven't had any reason to change it. Um, uses quarter inch bits. And yeah, so that's, and I think like, all in on this, I'm somewhere around you know 1,200 bucks, maybe 1,300 bucks with all the tooling. You can get I think the basic piece though for like $500, um, which compared to other micro lathes um, like the Sureline is way 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 less expensive. And then there's of course like the Chinese um, like nine by twelves I think or like you know nine by thirty sixers or seven by twenty fours like you know the sort of bench top ones that are about as big as this bench or a little smaller um, that you can get uh, from Grizzly or Harbor Freight or whatever. Um, and some of those are pretty good. Uh, if I had it to do over again, I might do one of those now, but when I got this like seven years ago or something, um, this was much higher quality than the Chinese ladies that were available then. And I haven't really, there haven't been too many times where I haven't been able to do what I needed to do for saxophone repair with this. That said, I don't make necks, I'm not making mandrels, I'm just making small parts. But this is the lathe I use, and uh, it's a pretty great starter lathe, and it's pretty cheap, and parts are available, and they're, you know, the place is pretty responsive to like customer comments. Lots of people have these. You can ask lots of questions, and for a beginner, for someone who's not great on the lathe, like me, um, having something really durable means I'm not going to like screw up the lathe if I cut too deep. I might screw up my part, but I'm not gonna screw up the lathe. This thing still cuts as precise as the day I got it, and I don't treat it very well because I don't know how to, because I'm not like a great machinist. Um, so for me, the you know relative lack of, you know, it doesn't need babied, it doesn't need like a lot of attention. It comes built right. You don't have to like finish it when it gets to you. You don't have to modify it to make it accurate. It just works. So that's the one I use. Um, you can see I've got like a little itty bitty grinder over here, but I don't use it too much. I use a bigger one usually because um, it just creates a lot of dust in here. Um, and yeah, the various like Allen keys I need. Um, and yeah, that's the lathe I use for saxophone repair. Hopefully you found that helpful, useful, informative. My name is Matt Storer. I repair saxophones for a living. Thanks for watching.